Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Tuesday Melt stream with the 2MK team. Obviously, we are playing Melty Blood, as you can see on stream, and today our focus is on recognizing moments in matchups that decided the outcome of the fight, or just a way that the two characters interact often enough that you have to care. We start a little late, so we'll probably be running on a little later as well. This is a NA style PS4 Atlantic Rim lounge. So if you're anywhere on or near the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, you can expect to have a decent connection to this lounge for participation purposes. If you have really good internet, you can probably manage from a little further away as well. But you can expect to see some time spent warming up by our team simply because this game has a lot of mechanics and remembering all of them usefully can be a little bit rough at first. At least, however, managing your combos isn't so bad. The moments I'm talking about can be those in which you slightly miss an attack, but that situation is likely to recur or where you land an attack that you otherwise would have had trouble landing because of your opponent's actions. Of course, these are relatively few and far between, and we end up with a lot to talk about relative to them, but not necessarily as much to talk about relative to the match going on around them. So there may be some periods on this stream where things are kind of silent simply because no such moments are happening. Of course, what one thinks is an iconic moment is related to your understanding of the game and what it's allowing you to do. If you think that something is not possible, then you probably won't notice very much when it does not happen. Enough to figure out that it is possible. This is why it's sometimes important to just drop your preconceptions of what is or is not possible in especially these types of games. Or you're going to be stuck just dealing with whatever Twitter or assuming that you even follow that. The general community, through whatever means, YouTube and so on, thinks is the way the game is meant to be played at the moment. That said, it is often better to learn your matchups based on that. It's once you've gotten past the basis of understanding things that you have to go a little further. And those are the moments we're looking for today. As for my voice, please forgive it if it's weird. It should be a bit better today, but I'm still feeling the effect somewhat. The lounge, as usual, has the 2MK marker, and it is winner stays on, though you are limited to only three consecutive victories. Yeah. 
but you can still feel free to jump in based on the fact that even if we don't actually manage to stand up to you, either your overall speed and skill, pressure, or any of those other things, mostly we at least understand what we're trying to do, and you might learn something random or new happening if we get away with one of the options that we choose. And if not, you can use it as a confirmation that, for the most part, those things we are doing definitely don't work. Especially if you're not terribly experienced with either these characters, or the game in general, from that perspective. Alright then, we are back to the complex matchup of trying to get to a specific spot and hoping that I don't get zapped. I mean, that's always true, that's basically any Rawa matchup, but you'll see what I mean in a bit. そこ。I would say the most iconic moment of that match was getting the charge B to hit. Because it tells me that I can not only get that, but combo off it in spaces where it's now a better idea. One of the main reasons this is important to me is because I'm used to being hit for attempting the charged attack in that situation when I use the charge C. But if I can get the better attack anyway, at least in some situations, then I've learned something. For example, my opponent recovering later so that they can counter the move, that I know I have options for. I know how to deal with the late recovery. I just don't know how to make sure that the charge move hits. And it tells me which combos to work on in my next training. Giving me a stronger understanding of which combos to work on is enough in itself. Just taking that one moment and going, oh, I should practice that so I can get more damage because this situation has unlocked itself in some way. Yeah, 
So let's see if I can use that knowledge to break through my opponent's defense in a specific way. A little better. With the number of fake outs that my character has available, it's a little bit easier to pull off certain things. But those aren't really iconic moments in the same way. Those are more to do with the understanding of the opponent, their mindset, the player as a whole, etc. <laughs> It is important to remember though that if you can't mislead your opponent and physically do the thing required, you should focus more on the doing the thing required than on the misleading part. まだまだ。遅い。
In my case, noticing that my opponent has shifted to their more defensive flow means I can slow down. But they've also had time to think about the fact that that happened, and therefore might not stay that way. As I mentioned on our previous stream, I was probably going to change within this one to using that general, let's call it, intimidation factor that I can have against some people. But discouraging players requires that you prove that you have the skill to keep up with them in the first place, so facing a new opponent can be a little more nerve-wracking the other way. Therefore, let's go back to looking out for the iconic moment of whatever this matchup is with this particular player. For example, here we can see a lot of movement in the air, which means that a lot of interactions are going to be a little slower. And I have to spend a lot more time very carefully aiming my air attacks. Fortunately, I don't terribly fear Shiki in the air. So, strictly speaking, I'm not really upset that this is happening this way. My biggest problem is that, as just demonstrated, Arcwade's way of attacking that space is a little bit more difficult. Another thing I've learned not to worry about is combos that start with weak attacks like that. They don't have any real meaning to me most of the time. Because they array it so terribly that it's impossible to say this is dangerous. You have to be more concerned about whether or not you can actually keep up with the opponent in neutral than anything else related to it. This is particularly true when you have been hit by such attacks 
but your opponent hasn't necessarily built up too much meter yet, and you haven't used your own. As the opponents you face get better and better, there are more situations in which you'll get properly opened up and take damage, but you don't care about it as much when your opponent's output isn't that high yet. It is a good way to protect yourself quickly, using your just using your 2A to set yourself up for better situations. But you'd often need to move past it eventually because it doesn't really pay off against a patient enough opponent. I think I went for shield but failed it. At this point, I'm basically just soaking up my opponent's damage because I know that it won't necessarily be enough. And the rest is spacing. Still a good game overall. After all, when you're not confident that you can deal with the situation, backing off to take a breather and decide whether or not you want to make a specific style of attack is still valid even if it feels like the problem you're solving is something that will cause you issues later. You do have to learn regardless of anything else, and unless you've got really specific goals in a given matchup to learn, the problem is resolved by watching out for what's happening and thinking during the match. The same sort of thing happens here. My opponent is probably going to be spending most of her time looking at the spacings that we get put at, because trying to just hit me wherever I am tends to fail. Now obviously there's me making a mistake and therefore being punishable. And you do have to be ready for that, but most of us manage that just like naturally. That for example, it's just it's fine, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. But if it were a thing for her to pay attention to, it would absolutely be what new weird spacing am I being put at? Because I'm mostly just going to ignore any damage I take, even until to this point, because I don't really care about any of it. I am facing someone who uses a different method of building up their attack, and as a result I have to be more careful. But it's the same sort of thing because I know their air game is going to be similar.
In most games, improving your offense isn't as hard as it is in this one. Improving your offense in this game involves moving past the pressure game, which leads to low damage, into baiting and refunishing, which leads to much higher damage. And this is just more or less raw truth unless you have specific characters or a really good control of a specific type of situation. Fortunately, my opponent can shield fairly well with these weapons, and you have to be careful about whether or not you're going to approach under those conditions or not. But as I'm very used to playing the zoning game against people, particularly people who don't move, the answer would be to stop attacking. After all, if my opponent cannot put themselves in the position where they think they can hit me, if I've gotten far enough into their head, let's say, it doesn't really matter whether or not they use zoning tools. As long as I have got the opponent to the point where they think they must keep using them, then the situation is in my favor. This, for example, is just a straight win condition. This is particularly true online because if you don't give your opponent time to think about the fact that you have other methods, they won't be able to develop strategies for how to break your guard as quickly. That uncertainty of whether or not you're going to attack is your weapon. Sauta, 
It's important for that reason to try to think of ways you can move through your opponent's attacks. Because the more you can move through their attacks, the more they will expect you to do that and try to use different attacks. Just keeping them in the mind state that yes, attacks are just going to keep coming no matter what is often the easier way to put stress on people who have good tools for preventing close range attacks in the first place. Despite the Shiki matchup being somewhat hard for Roa because of what happens when Roa's m attacks miss, you can minimize the problem here by simply using less committed attacks. Shiki can absolutely get Roa opened up quite a lot, but as demonstrated in my match, the amount of damage this does is kind of sad sometimes. Especially at the beginning of a round like this. Whereas Roa can just throw out moves to build up meter for free for a long time. So counterattacking and trying to get control of the match back once Shiki is close isn't necessarily all that much of importance. It's quite simply that a lot of the damage Shiki does is based almost entirely on Roa responding incorrectly to Shiki's attacking, whereas getting opened up and tricked usually is nearly zero damage, relative to what you'd expect from playing for a long time in a hard match, the damage is fairly, fairly low compared to many things. This is because for some reason, I guess for fairness, because he's a really strong character, Shiki's basic starters don't necessarily do as much, but because he has so many good neutral tools which do not have terrible proration and do actually start really damaging combos, a lot of your goal must be making sure that he can't get you to mess up in a way that will make you get hit by those. In fact, you can watch this match more so from the perspective of just the damage done. And while yes, this opponent is not necessarily grinding out max level Shiki combos, you can immediately see that that, for example, was both a better setup and way more damaging than anything else so far. It's also one of the better options to just throw that out in a situation where you expect your opponent to be trying a counter attack or something. One of the useful parts of that is, once again, that if you do this right, let's say, Shiki runs out of moon meter long before you are actually in danger. But again, this has a lot more to do with the skill of the player as a whole. Still, getting a life lead, setting up this situation, all good.
まだいけそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうおや、早死にをご消耗かいオープンユアマジックサーキットファイト One of the main things you can learn from that sort of thing If you've realized mm, I keep on getting opened up in pressure or taking this specific type of damage is the iconic moment of a match like that is that one What did I do to cause me to get hit by this thing that actually hurts? Because if you're a Shiki serious player, you know that that combo could be much more dangerous. This on the other hand, yeah, it hurts, it's okay, but again, there's a strategy involved here. It takes a while for Shiki to build back up to this when on low meter anyway, so just ignore it. The moon meter slowly running down, even more reason to just chill and not really care too much. Regening health would be even better here. Not necessarily safe, but better. Cause now Shiki has no way to start big damage. And a couple of relatively rough situations. Yeah. You have to be really comfortable with sitting on this sort of situation though. Where you can just be beaten by losing the same interaction over and over again. So try to make sure not to underestimate your opponent as a whole simply because you are managing to keep control of the matchup. That's a character thing most of the time. Like I'm here literally explaining this is how you deal with Shiki. But that isn't really about how you deal with Kill Miguel. It's, I can do this because the game allows me to do this. The player may come up with something that technically doesn't seem like a good idea and just go for that the entire time. And if you're thinking, well, I don't have to expect that, shiki players don't do that. Shiki players are will do what it takes to win, and if you counter their strategy a lot, then uh, yeah, they absolutely will just throw you three times. And they will be absolutely right to do so. <laughs> the rest of this is, as I noted, a lot of accuracy. Understanding exactly where you need to be and where your attacks need to go in order to make your life, your opponent's life miserable. But once again, this is more or less, yeah, I'm just ignoring the damage you've just done to me. We're not low in, we're not far enough back in the match for me to care about this damage you've just done. It isn't that the Shiki is playing particularly poorly, it's that Shiki's way of playing can be countered if you don't care about certain types of his damage, more or less. CL poses a different problem. CL does damage in similar ways, slowly chipping away at you, but this keeps her in advantaged situations. She's not trying to deal with Roa doing things. She has control over the fact that Roa is doing things, usually fairly well. Roa, in turn, must move through a bunch of stuff she does and won't always be able to do it while actually dealing much damage himself. See, having to start there, even given how powerful this character's overall output can be, you don't necessarily get that much out of it. Understanding the shield she can keep up is probably the key to the matchup. Stand just outside her range where she doesn't want to throw the keys because they might be reacted to. 
but you can't be absolutely sure her buttons will reach either. While you might not be able to respond to them, and this is a lot riskier in general, she's still a footsie style character and she does take fairly long to get certain other things done. So you could literally sit outside of her range and be ready to whiff punish or uppercut. That's about it. Simply because once she has entered a specific range by attacking, and I think I mentioned on previous stream that she tends to advance in her attacks quite a lot, there isn't as much for you to worry about. It's literally just learn how to hit it. In fact, this, a large part of what RCL bot is built around is recognizing, oh, I can hit that. Or, in many cases, you can't hit that because she has some special property on it or it clashes and you don't want to be able to put yourself in that situation unnecessarily. She is a decent character to pressure, similar to how the maids are, because even though you won't necessarily get much damage if she gets opened up, it does stop her from getting control of a space that you didn't want her to. From CL's side, the best option is usually to just randomly super jump. When you think you're about to be pressured but hasn't, hasn't started yet, super jumping out of the situation can save you a lot of effort. Because it's not that Roa can't catch you if you do so, it's that it's not terribly strong damage when you get caught. Therefore, you only really have to worry about it toward the end of a round. You can also use a sort of chained option slot because she can also jump out of her moon uppercut, like nearly every character. Just being sure that that's what you want to do is important. And of course noting that it's not necessarily that it's safe to try this, but if you're feeling like your opponent is about to try to mess with your spacing, you'll see me do that sort of thing on Arcade as well, just go, you know what, you're at the right range that my uppercut will hit you if I tap it, and I can mess with you in the air at least a little bit. As your opponents get better, you will get away with this less and less, but hopefully everything was helping you as well. This also helps because being on guard to do this changes the flow and your spacing at the mid-range. Since so she's usually not terribly suffering, i.e. hurting for moon meter, she often has quite a bit of it. She can use this to keep herself safer for longer. Do watch your execution though, as getting the precise parts of it right can be really hard. Another good reason to rely on the super jump if you must. If you're not used to playing these sorts of games, she can in fact seem slow, so she can in fact seem fast, but she's relatively slower. One of Arcade's best properties, you could say, in this matchup is the fact that she doesn't actually care about this. She can literally stand outside of Roa's mat's range. And while she doesn't have offense from there in the sense that you'd expect, you can't ignore the fact that she could do something either. 
because she can reach you so quickly if you don't do the lightning. And being sure which way she's going to do that is basically impossible. When I say it's impossible, I mean that you could throw out your own moon lightning to cover as many approaches as possible, but even those sometimes will get whiffed because the move she chose to do wasn't as long as you thought it was. Fortunately, it isn't just a matter of she moves really fast and I can get through things. Otherwise, it would be really hard for anyone to do much. It's also why uh, she doesn't have the greatest combos off of B shield simply because you don't really want her doing that. As a character, it's a little rough. A perfect choice as there was pretty much no way out of that otherwise. But even that was technically a, let's call it a bet, because I had done enough attacking that I could have baited it, it just wouldn't have necessarily been in my best interest because I was so low he on health already. Oof, accuracy. As you practice more, you'll be get faster and faster at making the decisions required to do this. Let's 
At the end of the day though, the main thing you will always need is more speed. You could say you will always need more accuracy, but eventually you can become so accurate that it doesn't matter. Speed you can say you always need more of because, simply put, the more speed you have the more interactions you can think about in the same space of time. And at the risk of like trying to break the laws of physics or something, that technically only has a very weird theoretical upper limit. The more interactions I can think about, the more likely it is that there will be some sort of ridiculous thing I'll think of to do. Since we did start late, we're also going to end somewhat later. But we're probably not going on for a long time after stream ends today. それから、それから、まだまだ。まだまだ。
Throughout the build up speed, I generally just offer using bots or fighting someone who you know is not necessarily a lot faster than you, but who knows the matchup and is fairly faster than you. But unless we have gone on long enough that we will in fact be ending the stream after this match and probably the lounge as well. You can check us tomorrow for Wednesday night in birth. And on Thursday for our Feeling Thursday King of Fighters stream. Yeah. 
You can find all our bots at 2-mk.org and information on whether or not we are streaming on any given day on our Twitter 2 underscore mk underscore fgc. But with that, this has been Rillian, 14 to MK. Good luck with your training and good night, everyone.